Frequent visitors of this channel know that I'm not a great fan of locals. I don't dispute they make things easier, especially for budding programmers. But in essence, you're adopting some very harmful habits, which will prevent you from learning Ford properly. As a matter of fact, I think you're faking it. It may superficially look like Ford, but it isn't. You could write the entire thing in any algol derived language, no sweat. Because in fact, you're incapable of using the stack to its full potential, let alone the rest of the language. Of course, when I'm confronted with such abominations, I'm always full of compassion and comprehension, and deal gracefully with the matter with the utmost understanding and support. In other words, if it's worth rewriting, I rewrite it, so it becomes real for it, no sweat. I've rewritten or even redesigned so many Ford programs. Let's add one more to the list, why not? In the meanwhile, lots of very fancy locals implementations have been written. And you know me, the fancier they come, the quicker they go out. Because I will choose clever over fancy every single day. Now, the question is, how hard would it have been for Chuck Moore, the guy who designed Ford, to add locals to his language? The answer is, it just needs two lines. Yes, you heard that correctly. Two lines, that's all. Now, I hate this guy with the terminal videos, but I'll prove it to you. Two lines. Are you counting? Local variables, here we go. Are they local variables or are they not? It takes only two trivial lines to add that functionality. And yes, they can easily withstand recursion and nesting. The whole shebang. It's rock solid. And they work with every single Ford compiler that features a classical return stack. Even 40H has demonstrated. This beauty was designed by Fred Behringer in 2012. But think of it, could Chuck have come up with a similar idea if he really wanted or needed it? Of course you wonder why this works. Let me begin by stating that global variables underlying these words are of secondary importance. They're just placeholders. The real trick is the clever use of the return stack. So let's dive right in. We just invoked local. We got an initialized global variable. The address of this variable is on the stack, and the return address of the local invocation is on the return stack. We transfer that return address to the stack, and then swap the return address and the variable address. With the variable address at the top of the stack, we duplicate it, and then transfer it back to the return stack. That's the first part of the stack frame. With the remaining variable address, we retrieve its value and transfer it to the return stack. Finally, we transfer the return address and put it on its rightful place on the return stack. Why? Because we're done here. Local has reached the end and needs to return to its caller. Now, if we recurse or call another word using the same variable, it will dump the current value on the return stack. To local, it's the same thing. It will simply create a new stack frame and store that value on the return stack. But how does it roll back all these values? That's where global comes in. 
we start with the stack frame we created, plus the return address of the current global invocation on the return stack. And then we transfer the entire shebang to the stack. The value and variable address are in the perfect position to issue a store, which will restore the value of the variable as it was before local was invoked. Then all we need to do is to transfer the return address back to the return stack. And that's the end of global. So we return to the caller, that's it, easy as pie. It's as light a local variable routine as you're ever gonna see, pretty painless. But sure, it doesn't remotely resemble the proposal for 2000 x put forward. But that one takes a whopping 54 lines or 4 blocks. I don't think that's something Chuck would have come up with. It's fancy, agreed, but the largest definition is 24 lines. It doesn't even fit in a block. Sure, if you condense it, but barely. Now the question is, how far can you go with these two lines? I know you can automate a lot while compiling Ford, but then you have to ask yourself, what do I get out of it? Like almost every single Ford programmer, I use my own compiler, so I'll try to make it work on 40H, and I'll invite my most annoying critic to evaluate my proposed solutions. Who I don't know yet, because there are far too many candidates, this could be fun. First attempt. I've used 40H preprocessor. It's quite a capable program. If you're interested, there's a link in the description. This one creates the required variables if they're not defined yet and gets rid of the nasty analyzation and destruction of the stack frames. And closely follows the 4.2000x syntax. It runs the slightly modified reference program perfectly. How's that? You have to initialize the arguments yourself, and on top of that, they are in reverse order. And there is no true support for uninitialized local variables. Ok, I got this. Second attempt. A little more elaborate preprocessor script, but it solves the problems mentioned before, and generates exactly the same code. It's really close to the 4.2000x syntax. In 4.2000x local variables are values, not variables. You have to finish the definition with a special word, double semicolon. Well, I think I can do that, but the generated code won't become much prettier, quite the contrary. But here you got it. It pretty much runs the 4.2000x code as is, but it requires more code because it has to recover the address of the value in order to present it to local. That's not normal practice. Anything else? You may end up with a lot of values that's wildly inefficient. The fancy stuff is always less efficient in terms of space and cycles than doing it the hard way. You may not notice it. Maybe in the great scheme of things it's just a little overhead. But it's definitely there. That's the price you pay for convenience. And if you want convenience, why are you using Ford in the first place? Look, you can convenience your way out of stack acrobatics. You can convenience your way out of postfix expressions. You can convenience your way out of fixed point calculations. You can convenience your way into garbage collection and regular expressions. But what is left after all that? Is it still Ford? And if you say yes, are you sure it will still carry the same benefits? Or will you be programming in a language that's essentially just another C-like imitation? And consequently, will you have the same experience? Think about it. Bottom line, if you want to write Ford, do me a favor, just write Ford. Don't fake it, don't cheek, just do the right thing. Write forth the way it is supposed to be written. And ending on that positive note, I'm Hans Bijsmer and this was Back and Forth.